Catwoman is nowadays considered more of a hero, or at least a somewhat altruistic thief with a heart of gold. But initially when she was introduced, she was a villain, who often managed to give Batman the slip too. Join me as we examine some of the versions of Catwoman more in line with her villainous origins as we count down the top 10 evil alternate versions of Catwoman. Number 10. Gata Gata is a famous pop star whose name is really Sheila Romero. Long after the Batman we know Bruce Wayne has died, there is a new Batman on the streets of Gotham. This Batman unfortunately for Gata is hogging all the media and press coverage. Taking this unintended slight quite personally, Gata sets out to get revenge on Batman becoming the new Catwoman. In the end however she does fall into the standard trap of many other alternate and main continuity versions of the character, falling in love with Batman while trying to beat him. So although she starts out as a more evil villainous type, by the end of the story she's on the side of good, alongside her once enemy, Batman. Number 9. Batman Returns In the Tim Burton universe turned Joel Schumacher universe that all started with the Batman 1989 film, we get introduced to the film's very own Selina Kyle. This version of the character is portrayed by Michelle Pfeiffer, who seemingly rises from the dead, surviving a very deadly fall from a high rise office building window. This version of Catwoman is hell bent on getting revenge on her old boss, Max Schreck, played by Christopher Walken, who tried to kill her after she learned of his villain his plans to steal Gotham's power. Selina ends up dating Bruce, not knowing that he is Batman to start. There are later indications in following films and television series that followed this that those two actually end up together and have a daughter named Helena, implying that this version of Catwoman inevitably does change her criminal ways, reforming and ending up partnered with Bruce permanently. However, in the film Batman Returns itself, Catwoman is really only known for being a villain, even if you do perhaps understand her motives and feel that she might be justified in her actions. At least a little bit justified, I think. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more Catwoman lists, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. I love talking about Catwoman, so I'd love to do more Catwoman lists. I don't know how many evil alternate versions of her are left, though. This was hard to find these ones. Really had to think about it. Number eight, Earth negative 22. While we don't know much about this version of Catwoman, we do know that she was one of the victims that was killed by the Joker during his final hurrah after he had learned that he was dying. At least the Joker of Earth negative 22, which is part of the dark multiverse. Catwoman in this reality was both an ally and an enemy of Batman, and Joker went on a rampage killing all of Batman's rogues, which was part of what pushed Bruce to the breaking point and caused Batman to snap Joker. Joker's neck in a blind moment of rage. This version of Catwoman, while likely a criminal, also had a tragic fate that played a role in helping to create one of the most evil versions of Batman ever, the Batman who laughs. Number 7, Batman 60s Show. Catwoman in the Batman live action 1960s show became an even greater, bolder, and more deadly villain as time went on throughout the course of the series. Sure, she also happened to have a romantic spark with Batman, but that didn't as often get in the way of her dastardly deeds. And even with her becoming more and more of a romantic interest as time went on, when Eartha Kitt stepped in to take the role after Julie Newmar left the show, becoming Catwoman in the third season, she really only served to elevate the villainous side of Selina Kyle even more. I feel like Eartha Kitt also helped to make it fun and sexy for female characters like Catwoman to just like be evil, like unapologetically evil. Being bad can be fun after all. Number 6, Madam Cat. Madam Cat hails from the Amalgam Universe, which over at DC is given the reality number of 496 and over at Marvel is given the reality number of 9602. In this reality, Selina Luther was the daughter of Green Skull, aka Lex Luther, and Lois Lane. She was basically raised to be evil, despite the fact that her mother did try to shield her and protect her from her father's villainy. As a result, Lois was killed by Green Skull, who then raised Selina to be just as vile and trained her in the ranks of Hydra. Despite her villainous past though, Selina does end up betraying her father in the end and seemingly switching sides to the side of good, before perishing in an explosion. At least it seemed like she perished in an explosion. Madam Cat is a combination of DC's Catwoman and Marvel's Madam Hydra. Number 5. Deceased 
In the world of Deceased, Selena Kyle becomes infected with the anti-life equation and becomes insanely violent and zombie-like. Although those infected aren't really in control of themselves and simply are compelled to behave the way they do, not specifically having intentions of their own, I think we can still consider them to be uh, pretty evil. I mean, they're basically zombies. Zombies are monsters and monsters generally fall on the side of evil as opposed to good. Except for good monsters that is, like zombies who just, you know, want to fall in love, or the lovable monsters of Monsters, Inc. In this reality, Catwoman ends up defeated by Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy after she has succumbed to the anti-life equation, Virus. Or I guess just the anti-life equation. It just feels weird to like not call it a virus, because they're basically like zombies, you know? Number 4, Catwoman 2. Catwoman 2 is Catwoman's kind of unofficial predecessor from the Kingdom Come universe. Here Catwoman herself, Selena Kyle, has retired from the world of vigilantism and thievery to start her own successful cosmetics company and brand. And successful indeed it was. She presumably spends most of her time running the multi-billion dollar company, and I guess just chilling and spending her money. Catwoman 2, on the other hand, uses Selena's former mantle, but is one of the new heroes to appear on the scene, whose methods are actually looked down upon by the older heroes. She follows the brutal and misguided example of the man of tomorrow, the villain, Magog. Number 3, Maggie Kyle. Maggie Kyle is known for being Catwoman's sister. In the main continuity, she was tormented by Black Mask to the point that she basically lost her mind and had a kind of a psychotic break. Inevitably what happened was she was made to consume pieces of her husband after she watched him being ever so slowly killed by Black Mask. Yikes. In the reality referred to as Earth Whatever, it was Selena who was Black Mask's victim and Maggie was the one who avenged her as Catwoman. Maggie was also very specific with the kind of revenge that she wanted and got when it came to Black Mask, killing him slowly, tormenting him as he had her sister in this reality, Selena. Maggie also seemed to relish what she had done, smiling gleefully about it. Part of what makes this version of Catwoman, Maggie's Catwoman, so evil here is what she did to Black Mask. The manner of it specifically, and of course her reaction to that act. She seems like really creepily happy about it. Number 2, Female Fury Catwoman. While Holly Robinson as Catwoman wasn't necessarily evil, like Holly Robinson herself isn't very evil, there was a period during her time as Catwoman where she was. She was really evil. This wasn't necessarily her fault as she had basically been captured and brainwashed by Darkseid into becoming one of his female furies. This all went down during Final Crisis when Darkseid had become the master of the anti-life equation and used it to basically enslave Earth, bending its inhabitants to his will. Holly Robinson's Catwoman included. And if you're wondering why Holly became Catwoman in the first place, it actually all started because Selena Kyle learned that she was pregnant and she was planning on retiring and kind of disappearing for the sake of her future baby. Of course, that didn't all go according to plan because obviously Selena is still in the comics and is Catwoman. So, yes. And she doesn't like just have a baby strapped to her or like a kid running around her ankles with her while she fights. It'd be hard to fight if you had to like bring your kid to work with you. You probably just shouldn't be a superhero if you have to do that. You should call someone and get a babysitter. Number one, Raina Creel and her copycat Catwoman Army. In the main continuity, Raina Creel was actually an impersonator of Catwoman, or rather, she she created a whole team of people to impersonate Catwoman, and she was the one that was in charge of it. And this criminal gang that she created was exclusively made up of copycats who all wore Catwoman's older suit design. Raina was introduced after Batman and Catwoman's wedding was called off, and Catwoman went off to do some of her own things outside of the Bats and Gotham shadows, taking up residence in Villa Hermosa in California during the start of her own 2018 solo series. Catwoman here faced off against a whole massive group of other Catwomen who are all seemingly hired by Raina Creel to carry out villainous and illegal deeds on her behalf. I just think this is such like a cool idea for a story and also there's some really really good covers um, from that story. Some really great covers in there. Who are your favorite versions of Catwoman? Do you prefer when Catwoman is more villain or more hero? Or do you like her best when she's, you know, somewhere in between the two labels, when she's blurring the lines? Let us know in the comments below. This has been Top 10 Nerd and I'm your host Amanda McKnight. Thank you so so much for watching. Until next time, you stay nerdy YouTube.